Thank you very much. Um, as I understood, this will be the last presentation for this day, so don't be afraid. I prepared 269 slides, and the exam will be at 4 p.m., so stay awake. And um, no, I will show you a little bit in detail one case study that I uh, did uh, for the technical report. I'm from the A1 Telecom Austria, and we did uh, measurements uh, to support uh, the technical report. As a beginning, I will, um, we discussed it a lot, uh, but I will say that again, uh, in general, we can distinguish two cases uh, of uh, exposure assessment uh, about measurements. The first uh, case is that we want to know something about the actual exposure. We heard it from the projects in the EU, uh, the probes in, in Paris, the dosimeter that uh, people are carrying for measuring the actual value of exposure. But if it comes to the question if uh, standards are met, then you have to do a certain work and you have to be in mind that the strength of a mobile phone signal can significantly vary over the time. We heard about it. And if you want to know if the limits are met uh, over the whole time, then you have to calculate to a maximum and then, we heard it before, then you have to measure a constant pilot signal and from this on you can to extrapolate to the maximum. Uh, this is one example for measuring. Uh, you can see here a terrace, for example, with many, many antennas. And the question in this case was uh, if this terrace is uh, accessible for public. And if you do such a measurement in such a case, then of course you have to extrapolate to a maximum because it, uh, the limits, the, the value, the measured value must every time, six minute average, every time below the limits. And as we heard, if you have passive antennas like in this example, then it's relatively easy but what do you have to do if you have active antennas? And I did this uh, case study in the, for the uh, technical report 62669, and you can also read it as an application note for uh, another equipment where it's also uh, publicated, and I did some further work. I will show it on the end of this presentation. In this case study, I compared different methods of the standard 6232 uh, and compared at the same measurement point the results and tried to find out are they valid, are the fits together and how does it uh, work, uh, all the uh, different methods. At first, calculation assuming free space environment, uh, calculation of the exposure, uh, the second, measurement under forced maximum traffic. As we heard, we take uh, user equipment behind the measurement antenna and force the beam to the measurement point with maximum traffic load. And the different extrapolation methods uh, based on the uh, signal that is always on and then we can uh, measure. This was the case study, as we have seen. I decided to measure four points. Uh, one was uh, really far away, more than 400 meters in suburban area. One relatively near, but with, with a vertical uh, angle on a car park. One in uh, moderate urban and one in rural urban areas. And uh, one important thing we will see at the end, you can see, for example, here, the antenna, you can't see, I think, the antenna, but it's the yellow circle, and you have many, many reflecting objects uh, in between uh, the base station and the measurement point. At first, as I mentioned, uh, I calculated assuming the free space environment. It's included in the standard. You can calculate uh, assuming a free space environment. Yeah, you have to know the 
shape of the patterns of the antenna, and then you can calculate the exposure level. The problem of this is that there is no reflecting object included, and you have only one direction line of sight calculated. The second met method is we measure under forced maximum traffic load. Also, this is included in the standard. Uh, this was the method that you have a mobile phone, user equipment, and you force the beam to the measuring point with a download, and you measure, in this case, frequency selective over the whole bandwidth and integrate over the whole bandwidth and measure the value on this measurement point. And we checked, of course, if you are at the right uh, base station, if you are at the right beam, that we as assumed. But we do have a beam forming, and I will show you a little bit uh, the principles of beam forming. As you know, traditional antennas has a fixed special pattern, so the antenna is um, sending the signal in, in a certain area. But beamforming is a key technology for 5B, uh, 5G. The RF power is radiated in a specific direction to a specific user. I, have, uh, I can show you a little bit in detail. Here you can see an antenna opened and you can see the array of all the dipoles. And how does this work? On the right side you see an example. And if the signal is a little bit delayed, technical spoken phase shift, then you can uh, direct the signal in a specific direction. And this is dynamic and you can choose it dynamic and so you can follow, for example, uh, user equipment with your beam. And these are, as an example, the pattern files of the specific beam that is following the user equipment. And there you can see the problem if you're measuring, for example, at this point on the left side and the main traffic is going to the right side, then you will measure or you will have an underestimation of the signal. So to uh, solve this all within the, the standard 62232, we have all the factors included that they have to be in mind when you are calculating to a maximum by if you are using a beam forming antennas. And this is the, let's say, one equation located in the standard. And I will go through all the factors and show how they can be included in your work. At first, you have to measure a stable signal, the pilot signal of the 5G signal. This is the first uh, part, the e-broadcast, and there you have two possibilities in 5G. You can measure frequency selective, as I will show in the next slide, the uh, SSB block, or you can decode the SSS signal. At first, you can measure frequency selective in the so-called zero-span mode, uh, the uh, beams and the SSB blocks. If you look there, you can see one, two, three, four spikes, let's say, in the signal. These are, at this configuration, the four beams of the broadcast channel. And of course, you're searching for the maximum SS be signal, and then you can measure over the time. We have to do three measurements because we want to isotropic measure in all directions, and then you can measure the SSB block. Modern uh, measurement equipment can also decode the SSS signal, so you can decode the specific SSS signal, and here you can see the in this example all the four, four beams are decoded. In this case, the SSS number three, we start at SSS number zero, is the biggest signal. And from this signal, I have the 
pilot channel of the 5G uh, signal. <laughs> Second step, and this is one of the crucial steps, and I showed before in beam forming, if the, is the beam correction factor. And sorry, I want to go a little bit in details of the beam correction factor. What is the difficulty in this? Because you have the broadcast channel, as we have seen, the four beams, and you have the traffic channels. And the shape of the uh, pattern can be different to the measurement point. I sh will show you this in this example. If you are measuring here, then you can see in the red cycle that the shape of the two lines are different. And this difference you have to take into account. And this is the so-called beam correction factor. And this, of course, you can calculate if you know the geometric position between your measurement point and the base station, then you can calculate this factor if it's in dB or as a factor, it's the same, and you can calculate this factor. The next step is, if you're measuring not the whole bandwidth, then you have to extrapolate to the whole bandwidth. That's clear. If you're measuring a portion of a, of a frequency, then you have to extrapolate to the whole bandwidth. I think that's clear. Also here, uh, there are uh, tables uh, within the standard and you can calculate to the whole bandwidth. The next factor is the power reduction factor, as we heard before, because of the beam forming, uh, the, the power is variating over the time, and so you have, you can include the uh, power reduction factor, uh, and the, this is the difference between the theoretical maximum and the actual maximum. With this factor, you can include the calculation of the ac actual maximum. Then, it's tricky, but we have a so-called TDD system. That means that the signal of the base station to the use equipment, the downlink signal, and the signal from the use equipment to the base station is within the same frequency range. How does this work? You have a frame structure of downlink and uplink signals. Here, downlink is blue, uplink is yellow. In the downlink signal here, you can see again the spikes of the broadcast channel and the bigger spikes are the download traffic signal, and in between you have uploads from the user equipment, but in this case there was no upload, only download signals, so you can see many um, downloads, but in the yellow one, no upload signal. And the last factor we also have to include in the calculation. It's a little bit tricky, it's called boosting factor. This is a uh, factor, let's say, uh, for optimization for the network. The network operator can put more power on the broadcast channel. He's losing some power for the traffic because uh, then he has not so much um, possibilities on, on the download, on the traffic, but to introduce this boosting factor gives more coverage for the UEs to access to the base station, and it's easier for the UE to access the, um, uh, the, the network. It depends on the operator if it's included or not. So if you are calculating this, you have to have this information uh, if it's included or not. And I added a um, special or, or an additional calculation to, uh, to these calculations. Uh, you can also calculate similar to the forced maximum frequency selective also from this scope measurements or zero span measurements 
you can also calculate to the maximum power when you are forcing the uh, exposure with an user equipment. And these are the results I uh, show you in, with also included in the technical report or will be included in the technical reports. And you can see the comparison between all the different methods. And I took as a basis to one I have to, to choose as a basic uh, basis for comparison. I took the channel power measuring during maximum traffic load. And what we can see at first, um, it zoomed in, of course, at first, it fits more or less relatively well because you have also been kind that every measurement equipment has an uncertainty. And this uncertainty is plus minus 3 dB or a little bit uh, less than plus minus 3 dB. So you can see that the difference are not so uh, much different. But what you can see, this is the first uh, if you are far away from the base station, the calcula calculation using free space environment gives an underestimation. Why? As I said before, you have reflecting objects, and so this calculation isn't enough. You have to do something like a simulation uh, because you have many, many reflecting objects. And the second important thing you can see on the uh, measurement point D there it fits really very well, all the results, because this was in the rural area without any reflecting objects. If you, you have such uh, environmental uh, conditions without any reflecting uh, objects, then it fits very well. If you have reflecting objects or you are within a city, then it's difficult or you have, of course, reflecting um, propagations and so you have differences in the results. In my work, I found out, um, let's say, two main challenges. The first was, as you remember, the calculation of the uh, beam correction factor. As you remember, the red dot, the differences between, because if you are calculating this, you need precise geometric relationships uh, between the measurement point and the uh, base station uh, antenna. Um, if you have many, many reflections, then it will be difficult. And if you have non-line of sight condition, then it will be uh, nearly impossible to calculate this. There's, uh, uh, there are some work uh, of the group around Borncastle uh, that did some work on this and they showed it uh, very well that uh, this will, you will come in troubles and the, uh, with, with non-line-of-sight conditions. The second uh, thing we also heard uh, in the morning, measurement under forced maximum traffic load is only possible if you are the only user in the network and your user equipment is assigning the maximum possible transmission. The first measurement I did was in a stage of the base station where less traffic was there, so I had a relatively stable signal with this method. But, and I will show you uh, an experiment we did in the energized chamber to show you the effect if you're not alone in the, uh, uh, in the uh, sector. We did uh, the setting that we have a beam forming antenna, we have the measurement equipment, and uh, we had the measurement point seven meters away from the base station, and we put behind, 1.5 meters behind, the uh, first uh, user equipment, and it was in the direction when you have of the, in the, at the beam, zero dB attenuation, and we tested it with a second UE at the same time. And these are the results. 
Above you can see the measurement of one mobile behind the measurement point. You see a certain value. And you can see in the zero span mode, all traffic download slot is with full power. Even if you have one more user equipment at the same time doing a download, you can see the measurement value is decreasing. And on the zero uh, span measurement, you see the time slots for the first are at the high power, and the time slots for the second user equipment, you can see that they are lower. So this is the main problem with this measurement method, because if you are measuring in a, a network that is used, you have not the chance to measure really the full power. But also included in the standard, there is a possibility to uh, have a solution for all these problems. I think I'm working on it, and I hope I can include all the results in the uh, technical report. I tested the two equipments. They are also here in the room. The VRV tool and the uh, NADA tool, and both have included a new measurement, uh, let's say, approach for 5G uh, that measures uh, with the so-called um, um, waterfall diagram. And how does this work, or let's say, spectrogram measurements? You do the measurement in the same way as I told before. You have a user equipment that force the maximum power, and the measurement measures uh, the frequency range on the x-axis and the time on the y-axis, and you can see I'm sorry for the, for the pictures, they're a little bit um, uh, not, not so good in the quality, but you can see in the first picture all the downlink resource blocks are dark red when you are measuring one mobile behind. And if you are measuring with two mobiles, you can see it a little bit. There are lighter red uh, areas and dark red areas. And if you're taking only the dark red areas, then you have the resource blocks for your user equipment, and you can see the calculated actual maximum exposure is uh, nearly the same. And I think this will be a solution for measuring 5G in a proper way. The Advantages are you don't need the information from the operator or the manufacturer from the antenna, for example, the, the pattern files. You can measure it at any time uh, with your, your own. And um, uh, it seems uh, all the, the preliminary results are very good. And I think this is one solution how you can perform 5G measurements without doing all the calculation I told you before. And uh, after the presentation, in the second part of uh, the afternoon, you can have a look at the two measurement systems, and the, I hope they can present the, this software and can show how it works, and it's really um, a good way, uh, in, in my opinion, to avoid all these uh, really difficult calculations. And this one, we are working on it to include also in the technical report to have the also uh, all the figures and, and values. Thank you very much.